This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. In this video, I'm going to discuss the basics of the Krebs cycle. In previous videos, I've covered enzymes and chemical reactions, ATP, several different ATP producing pathways, the phosphagen system and anaerobic glycolysis. I would encourage you to watch specifically how acetyl-CoA is formed before watching this video. Because this video covers how acetyl-CoA is oxidized in the Krebs cycle. As a disclaimer, I've simplified some of the molecular drawings for explanation purposes. In the last video, we covered how acetyl-CoA was formed from glucose molecules and fatty acids. Once acetyl-CoA is formed, it can be oxidized in the Krebs cycle where coenzymes are reduced, and then those coenzymes can be oxidized in the electron transport chain. This video is going to cover the oxidization of acetyl-CoA. This is a very detailed diagram of the Krebs cycle. Don't leave me here, I'm going to take you through the basics. In the previous video, we showed you how pyruvate can be oxidized to form acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA can then combine with a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate to form a six carbon molecule called citrate. This is the first step of the Krebs cycle. So acetyl-CoA is two carbons, oxaloacetate, four carbons combined to form citrate six carbon with the enzyme citrate synthase. After that, citrate can then move into a series of different steps to form different substrates and products. And in the end, oxaloacetate is reformed. So this four carbon molecule is reformed in the last step of the Krebs cycle. That means two carbons are lost as carbon dioxide. In the process of acetyl-CoA being oxidized, we have the reduction of NAD to form NADH. Furthermore, ATP is also formed. So let's take you through the highlights of the Krebs cycle. It takes place in the mitochondria, specifically the matrix of the mitochondria. There are eight reactions that end up reforming the initial substrate. In the process of those eight reactions, acetyl-CoA is oxidized to form three NADH, one FADH2, and one ATP. Obviously, because two carbons are lost in the reformation of the four carbon molecule of oxaloacetate, two molecules of carbon dioxide are produced, which can then leave the mitochondria, pass out of the cell into the blood, and that blood returns it to the lungs. Once these coenzymes have been reduced, they can then move on to the electron transport chain. As you can see, the Krebs cycle does not produce a lot of ATP. However, its main function is to oxidize acetyl-CoA, liberate some of the energy that's transferred to these coenzymes. So as we move forward in oxidative metabolism, we've covered how acetyl-CoA is formed, its oxidation so that coenzymes are reduced. We're going to now move on to the big ATP generating finale so that all these coenzymes that have these electrons and hydrogens attached to them are now going to be oxidized in the electron transport chain and that energy is going to be harnessed to form bonds between ADP and phosphate. 